do. Good evening, good evening. How's everyone doing? Penny, Natasha, and Darlene, good evening. Natasha, can you hear me? Darlene, can you hear me? Oh, Darlene may be at work. Okay. Good evening. I can hear you. Okay. How you doing? Hey, okay, Mr. Tizzy. How are you? How are so, you? So, doing well. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess I'm still doing well. I'm still breathing, but it's just been a rough, rough day. But, you know, got, got to keep moving. Got to keep moving. So, one of the things I wanted to go over. So, Penny, I was going to ask the question about, um, system of equations. So usually on the GED, they're going to give you an explicit uh, system of equations where you have to, they give you two equations. You got to either solve for X, solve for Y, or the point that satisfies both system of equations. And what, and the problem is, this is the word problems that they've been given, similar to this. So I kind of want to explain it to you. So we understand that if they're giving you multiple choice, hold on for one second, I'm sorry. Hold on for one second, this is this is uh, very important. Hold on, oh, I'm sorry, I am so sorry. Hold on, Kyrie, hold on, hold on. Um, I can't even find my pause, but ah, so it's got me so flustered right here, I'm sorry. I'm gonna record. So as I was saying before, they're either gonna give you explicit of a system of equations or word problem. And this is the issue. People have been having problems with, with word problems. But yes. I'm a, watch this. This is considered a difficult problem. It says Homer sells tickets for admission to your school play and collects a total of $104. Admission prices for are $6 for adults and $4 for children. children. He sold 21 tickets in total. Wow, like how would you even do this problem? Well, you could set it up the long way as a system of equations, but this is what I want you to understand. And this is what I want you to realize that when they give you multiple choice, plug them in. So here we know one equation is they both tickets, the uh, adult and children must add up to 21. So when we look at each of these, that's 21, that's 21, that's 21, that's 21. So on both sides, they both satisfy one of those equations where children and adult tickets are $21. So we got $6 for adults, $4 for children. So watch this. So I'm going to multiply this by 6, multiply this by 4, multiply this by, multiply this by 6, multiply this, multiply this by 4. Same thing. We're going to do it for all of them. Why? Because adult tickets are $6 and children are 4 now, what we want to know is, we want the total to be what? 104. 104. So we, so we just grab, grab our calculator and watch this. Let me grab my calculator. I got so many things open. Um, let me open my calculator. And then all we're going to do is try each of the multiple choice until the total is 104. So all that solving algebraically, we won't have to do. So th again, this is a a practice test in Schoology. So I got them both ways. I have where you have to solve the system of equations and multiple choice. So you can get used to both of them. But watch this. So uh, 12 times six, right? Plus nine times four. Hold on, let me move this up a little bit so everybody can see it, nine times four. So let's see it. Now I, I want a total of 104. I'm gonna hit enter. Do I have a total of 104? Did I get a total of 104? No. No. So I know it's not A. So now I'm going to go into the multiple choice B. So I'm going to go up into my original equation I plugged in. Instead of 12 times 6, my second multiple choice, I'm, what am I multiplying by 6? 11. 11. So 11 times 6 and 10 times 4. 10 times 4. Right? Let's see if I get 104. It's a I third still, choice. I still don't get 104. I still don't get 104. So let me go to my third choice. And again, 10 times 6. 
10 times 6, and then 11 times 4. But look what I just did. I didn't do any work. I didn't do any algebraic work to solve this problem, and I got my answer. I heard somebody say it was the third oh, one. Question. Yes. Okay. Only if you have multiple choice. But if you don't have multiple choice and if they want to fill in, because some of the questions ask you, give you the um, question, and they say, okay, give me your answer in the blank. Okay. Right. So, so you're talking about my test, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I Listen, I purposely make my exams harder. Yeah, and this is are. why. So if you if you get through mine and you got a 60, 65 on mine, uh -huh. you, you're ready to go. <laughs> Schedule that one on one with me so we can get in and you can go and pass your test. I'm, I purposely do that. So, again, so let's let me solve this algebraically or how you would set that up, how you would set this up. So you can see the difference. Now, that way took me about a minute and a minute and a half at most. But now let's do it together. So first of all, my first equation is the first thing you want to do is identify your variables. What are my variables in this equation? Um, what am I going to assign for variables? The unknown. So, so what are my unknowns? Your unknown is uh, um, 21 ticket X and nope, 14. No, wait, home sales, a ticket, a mission ticket. So, what should my variable stand for in this problem? Adults and child, adult and child. So, I'm gonna call X adults, Y children. Does everybody understand this is the first step in solving a system of equation? What do your variables stand for? So my X is going to stand for adult tickets and my children, I mean, my Y is going to stand for my children tickets. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So now when I look at this, he sold 21 tickets total. Well, we don't know how much he sold, but we know adults plus children equal 21. That's my first equation in my system of equations. Does everybody understand that? Yes. My next question is, okay, $6 for each adult. So six times whatever, how many adult tickets you sold, plus $4 times whatever children tickets I sold must equal to 104. So these are your two equations that consist of your system of equations. X plus Y equal 21. And $6 times the number of adult tickets plus $4 times the number of children tickets are equal to $104. Everybody understand that? Yes. Now, there are several ways. So, Penny, as you were saying earlier, you've been studying elimination and substitution. Okay? Now, either way is fine. I'm going to do, let's do substitution. So substitution means you solve for one of the variables already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for Y. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say X plus Y equal, 20, equal 21. So in order to get Y by itself, I need to get rid of X. So Y is equal to 21 minus X. So now I'm going to take this Y value and I'm going to plug it in to this Y here. So 6X plus four times 21 minus X equal 104. Now, what you should be seeing right now is that this way is so much longer already. We've already been on this problem three minutes and, we is not, and we're not even close to finding the answer. This is why this is considered a difficult problem on your GD. So now we're gonna do distributive property, six X, Four times 21 is 84. Four times minus X is minus 4X equal 104. We combine like terms, 6X minus 4X is 2X plus 84 equal 104. I'm going to subtract 84 from both sides. Now, this becomes a two-step algebraic equation. We get 2X equal 20. Now we divide both sides by two. We get X is equal to 10. Well, since we know both 
number of tickets must add up to 21, we know Y is 11. Right? Now, it took us much longer. Did we get the same answer? Yes, we did. But the second way took so much longer. So should you know this way? Yes. If you want to, uh, if you're going to post-secondary or going to college afterwards, should you know uh, a system of equations? Yes. But also know how to use the multiple choice to get your answer much faster. That way you can save some time and you can feel more confident as you take your exam. We all saw that doing it this way takes about four to five minutes. The other way takes about 30 seconds. And then if you use your calculator, it's even faster. You just plug them in. <laughs> All right. So, Penny, I hope that answers your question. Any things that in terms of system of equations, um, continue working on that. Again, um, I do have a, I created a brand new, let me go back up to the top here, a brand new, well, I think it's like a week old, system of equations in Schoology. So you have about 13 problems that'll prepare you for each way that you might see a system of equations on the GED exam. So I got about 13 problems. I'm gonna have, a, in total, I'll probably have 15. I just haven't finished yet. But when I saw people practicing, I saw about four or five people practicing on system of equations. So I wanted to make sure I got this out there, at least, um, uh, you could practice something. So I got about 13 problems. Um, so you can practice them. All right. Um, any other questions or any other uh, concepts um, that you may have issues with during this week? Because I saw a lot of people working in school again, and I was trying to, I was trying to uh, uh, mark the, mark the uh, uh, assessments and quizzes and get them back to you. But keep up the good work. Keep pushing the envelope, keep practicing, because um, you should be uh, approaching that point where you should feel like, let me take one of these practice exams. Any other concepts you've been working on? Bridget? Yes, yes I do. Um, the, you remember Monday, I had to leave, because I, I work on Monday, so I'm at work now, but I had to leave early. But Monday, we was doing that quiz with thing. But mm -hmm. I couldn't do it because I was at work. But I did go back and I did it. And I understood everything that um, I did really good. I understood everything with no problem. The only problem I had was with the last problem with the um, the, the powers. You know how you say that if you got the same base, you add the um, exponents. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't understand how did you come up with that answer? How did you get down into the I think it was to the third power. I don't know. Do you have the problem? No, and oh no, you know why I don't have it because it's on. I wrote it down and I was going to email you, but I'm at work right now. Okay. It's on the, um, but it's also no. I went to quiz that that little that right. little game from from your website. Yes. So let me explain. Let me explain to you. Is it, there's a bunch of different things that you can use on quizzes to help you prepare. I got one for formulas. I got one for a slope. I got one from slope from a graph. So again, it's like a quiz. You can take them over and over. These are all things that you can use to help you. Now those are on my website. I, I'm, I'm actually I created two more this week because um, um, I had several people in my emails tell me how beneficial they were in terms of to use them to study for because not only can you you um you can also look use them almost like flashcards so what once uh young lady explained to me was she used the formulas like basically flashcards so you can use them as flashcards so you can flip it so when you click it it flips it and turns it around so that's she used them to remember all her formulas and then when she went to take her exam she, she didn't have to go to the worksheet. She already knew the formula. So she said that was very beneficial. So I've been, I've been uh, working on two more quizzes that I want to add. But let me see if I can find that problem. And I'm going to try to look it up, too. On the, um, I'm on my job computer, so I'm trying to look it up, too. But I can make, I, I'll make one up real quick. I'll make one up. So I'll say uh, three to the third times uh, five to the second times uh, three times five to the third to the third power. 
Exactly. Something like that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that tells you I've been I've been working too much, right? I've been doing this too often, right? So this is one of the first five. Okay, well, you have to know your exponent rules. So let me kind of summarize the exponent rules. I'm going to do them fairly quickly. If you don't know them, then what you're going to have to do is play the video over. And you may have to pause and then write them down. The first rule is that anything to the zero power, no matter what it is, anything to the zero power is one. Is one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything to the first power is the base itself. Right. Okay. The third one is if you're multiplying exponents with the same base, so that the base is X, the exponents are two and three. If you're multiplying, you add the exponents. Right. So you add them. So this right. is X to the fifth. If you're dividing exponents with the same base, you subtract top minus bottom. Seven minus three is four. Okay, you have to know these rules. Right. And then um, the, ne uh, the, the next one is you raise to a power. So X to the third, to the third power is you multiply those exponents. So three times three, this is X to the ninth. And then the last rule that you should know is negative exponents. So if I got X to the negative second, that's one over x squared. So basically, you just change the sign of the exponent and change the orientation. So since it's on the top, on the left side, we put it on the bottom, <clears> on the right side. So those right. are the five rules. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six rules that you should know. These are your exponent rules. You have to know them. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then okay, I have a question. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Now, this is where I'm confused. You see, you have three to the three to the three power, right? Mm -hmm. And that five to the three power and the mm -hmm. exponent with the three. That's right. different. Why is not the same if the three is outside? I don't understand. So one is a power and one is an exponent, right? Well, well, well they're both exponents. They, they're both powers. So for example, so say for example, right, when I got X to the third, that's X times X times X, correct? Right. Well, say X is equal to X squared. So instead of X, now I got X squared times X squared times X squared. So it doesn't matter what it is. Those are the rules. Anything could be raised to a power. So for example, this is what I mean by that. Hold on, let me erase some of this because I don't want to be. So let me erase some of this here. So uh, exponent and raised to a power, they the same thing. This is five to the third power. This is five raised to the third power. Right. So everything, so what this means is, for example, let's look at this example right here. This one right here on the bottom, right here, right? X to the third raised to the th third power. So this, we're going to do this exponent first. We're looking at that, right? So this is X to the third times X to the third times x to the third, because anything in those parentheses is multiplied by itself three times. So now yeah. if you look at this, if, if, you, if we apply those rules, the exponent rules, when you're multiplying by exponents with the same base, we add them, three, six, nine. But then you recognize, hold on, that's x to the ninth, that's x to the ninth, and you realize that all you need to do is multiply. When something, a power is raised to a power, you multiply the exponents. Got me? Got you. All right, so now let's go through this example. So now, now, does anybody have any questions on the exponent rules? Is there anything that anybody does not understand? Okay, good. Remember, this is the place where you ask questions. Don't be scared to ask questions here. This is, I'm going to help you pass this test. So if you got a question, ask it. Don't be scared. Ask it. Okay? So when we look at this, when we look at something like this, first of all, anytime you have more than one operator, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, order of operations. Anytime. So if you have more than one operator, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So let me change this to blue. So now, 
anything in the parentheses is first, because please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Anything in the parentheses can we uh, uh, simplify? There's nothing inside the parentheses that we can simplify anymore. So we're done with that. Then we go to the exponents. So we have exponents. So this is the exponent we have here. So we got to apply this exponent to everything in here. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm not going to change this at all. Right? What the, what the GD always does for your exponent rules is they always give you like a three or five or eight. But what you got to remember is if you don't see an exponent, it's to the first power. So now, if an exponent is raised to a power, we must multiply. So three times one is what? Three. Three. So three to the third. Three times three is what? Nine. Nine. So five to the ninth. So now we simplify that exponent. Now, remember the rules. If we're multiplying exponents with the same base, we add the exponent. So here we're going to identify any, remember, it doesn't matter the order that we multiply. Three times four is four times three. This is what I mean by that. Three times four times five is equal to five times four times three. Three times four times five is the same as three times four times five. So it does not matter the order. Okay, that's your, your, your associative and commutative properties. Okay, so I want you to remember that. So because that's the case, we can do this. We can look at, since this is multiplication and this is multiplication. So we have two exponents with the same base. So what do we do to the exponents? Mm. Add, what's three plus three? Six. Six. Now we have another two exponents with the same base. They both have the same the base five. So what do we do to the exponents? Eight. They go our answer. Three to the six times five to the 11. And that's how you do a problem like that. Um, if anybody has taken a, a actual GED exam, they can probably tell you they've seen a problem like this. It's almost on every single GED exam. You must know your exponent rules. So listen, the two questions that were asked today, Penny and Bridget, first of all, you gave two questions that guaranteed on your exam. So I know the class thanks you right now. So, and this is what we want to do. Anything that you're having problems with or working with during the week, bring it to this section, bring, bring it to this session. Because if you're having problem with it, somebody else is probably having issues with it too. Okay. Any other concepts we want to go over? Okay. All right, so is it, was it this one? No, was it this one? Yes, okay. Multiplying binomials, okay, is guaranteed on your exam. Guaranteed on your exam. So what I want to do is I want you to show me, okay, and we're going to go backwards. In this question, it says solving quadratic equations by factor. So they already gave us this quadratic equation, right, in a factored form. But what I want to do is I'm going to go backwards. First, I want to find out what the quadratic equation is. And then we're going to look at each factored form, okay, each factored form. And then we'll solve the quadratic equation. That's the whole purpose of factoring the quadratic equation is so we can solve it, right? So how do we solve, num if we look at number one, how do I, what am I going to do to get the quadratic equation? What do I do? Multiply. What Multiply what? You multiply the K by the K. What's K times K? K, K, K to the second square. K, K to the second squared or K squared or K to the second? K squared. Right. So you can either say K squared or K to the second. Okay. K squared. Or K to the second. They're the same thing. Okay. And now what am I going to do next? And then I'm going to take the K times the negative five, which is going to be uh, negative K five. Negative K five? Negative five K. 
right? Because the because the coefficient goes first. Negative five right. k. What's next? One time k, which is one k plus one k plus one k. Then, um, one time zero. No. Oh, I, I'm sorry. One time five is um negative five. One times negative five is negative five. Correct. Right. I'm sorry. So this is one of the skills you have to be able to do on your GED exam. You must know how to solve or, or multiply binomials. If you notice, solving quadratics and multiplying binomials are closely associated concepts. Now, do we have any like terms? Um. Yes. Oh. What? Yes. What we are have they? negative five k plus 1k, which is going to be negative 4k, 4K. And then everything else we're going to bring down. Bring down, right. So your quadratic equation is k squared minus 4k minus 5, right? Right. Now, usually you should be able to go from uh, the factor form to the quadratic equation, and you should be able to go from the quadratic equation to the factor form. Because once you find the factor form, you can solve this quadratic equation. So I'm going right. to clear this right now, and let's solve this quadratic equation. If you were given this quadratic equation in this factored form, what would be the solutions? What would be um, the solutions to this quadratic equation? The solution would be um, what we just... Oh, the solution would be um would it be, would it be k plus one equals zero? K, that that is true. K plus one equals zero. Then you gotta solve it. Right. I'm gonna give you a, a nice easy way. You don't even have to do that. Watch this. What's the opposite of plus one? At minus one. What's the opposite of minus five? Negative one and plus five. There plus you go. Five. Plus five. There you go. There's your solutions to your quadratic equation. Okay. So, for example, the solution for number two would be what? Minus one, minus two. Easy. Easy. Wow. So, now, now, listen, in the book, in the book or, or in a textbook or in classes, you're right. You can set it up like that. K plus one equals zero. K minus five equals zero. But watch what happens. Subtract one from both sides. K equal negative one. Add five to both sides. K equal five. What you realize is finding zeros is just the opposite. So if you don't have a coefficient for your variable, it's just the opposite. So minus one and plus five. And for number two, minus one and minus two. Everybody understand that? Yes. Now, second of all, let's look at another example where we're going to multiply the binomials like number three. Because what I've seen on the GED exam is they'll give you a quadratic equation, but then in the multiple choice, they'll give you four different factored versions. So if you know how to multiply the binomials, you can find that answer. So help me multiply the bino binomials for number three. What am I going to do first? Four, four times K. Four, four K times K. What's four K times K? Um, k, k to the second power. Take your time. Take your time. Can anybody help her? Four, four, four k four to the second. K to the two. Four k squared or four k to the second power. I'm so sorry, which, yeah. Which, that's all right. What you're actually doing is, remember, the coefficient in front of that K is a 1. So 4 times 1, it gives you your 4. And then K times K is K squared. Right. Okay. Now, what are we going to do next? 4K times 1. What's 4K times 1? 4K. 4K. What are we going to do next? 5 times K. And what's 5, five times K. K? 5K. And then what are we going to do last? Five times one five. Now remember, make sure you remember those signs. So you're not just putting five. That's not to putting five k. You're putting plus five k. You're putting right. plus five because these are yeah. terms that we can combine. So do we have any terms that we can combine? Yes, four k five. 
4K and 5K. So we bring down our 4K squared. What's 4K plus 5K? 9K. Plus 9K plus 5. Plus five. So now we went from the factor version to the quadratic equation. Now I want to show you a shortcut that if they give you the factor version, you can solve the quadratic equation. Okay, so again, we take the opposite. So minus five over four. And minus one. Look what I did. Take the opposite minus five and put it over four. Now, watch what I want to show you next. Because this is, remember, your calculator is your friend. And you got to remember that as many times as I say it, you have to know it. And you have to practice with the calculator. Why? Because let's check to make sure minus five fourths and minus one satisfies this quadratic equation. Let's make sure if we plug those numbers in, we get zero. So because I know how to store on my TI, 30XS calculator, minus one store X. Bam, that's K here, but we don't have K on this calculator. Can I use X? Yes, it doesn't matter what variable you use. Now, let's look at the quadratic equation. Watch this, four X squared plus nine X plus five. If my answer is correct, I should get zero. Did I get zero? Yes. Yes, so I know. So that's another way that if they give you multiple choice to solve a quadratic equation, if they give you the solutions, use your calculator, plug them in. Now let's try minus five fourths, okay? So because it starts with a negative, I'm gonna do minus ND five over four store X. Again, it's the same process. And I'm gonna plug it into my Quadratic equation, 4x squared plus 9x plus 5. Let's see if I get zero. Did I get zero? Yes. We know our solutions solve this quadratic equation. Okay, so that's one of the ways that if you're taking your GD and they give you answers for the quadratic equation, plug them in. Then you have to even do all this work. But that's if you know how to use this calculator. So make sure you spend time using the calculator. So let me save this real quick. Let me clear it. Let me maximize the uh, screen so you can see it if you need to look at it later. Take a screenshot of that. Okay. So make sure you practice. Make sure you practice storing your variable in your calculator. Make sure you practice evaluating the algebraic expression. Make sure you uh, uh, practice uh, um, um, solving a quadratic equation by plugging the variables. Make sure you know how to evaluate a function using this calculator. Why? Because that's one, two, three, four, five, at least five. I put 10 up. At least five which hand, at least five problems on your exam. Now, let's look at number five. This has caused problems for a lot of people. This has caused problems for a lot of people. Mr. Tinsley, that's not the quadratic equation you showed us. So what you have to remember is this. So let me, let me give you some multiple choice first. Let me give you some multiple choice first. Let me put... So A is, uh, uh, let's see, I'm gonna I'm need two answers, right? So we're gonna do minus three and minus eight. We're gonna do uh, three and six. We're gonna do, three and eight, and then we're gonna do three and minus eight. So I gave you the answers, right? And people, and you having problems doing this, doing this, uh, solving this quadratic equation, but they, I get, you are given the multiple choice, right? What should you do? Plug them in. 
Pluck, stop playing. You may not know how to do it because what's going to happen? You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be upset. You're not going to know what to do in the exam. So sometimes you're going to have to take a deep breath and you got thinking me in your ear saying, what do I know? I know that for any equation, if they give me the answers, I can plug them in. No matter whether it's a linear equation, no matter if it's a quadratic equation, no matter if it's a function. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to plug them in. Minus three, store X. And I'm going to plug it in. X squared minus 11X plus 19. When I hit enter, what should I get? Minus five. Minus five. If I don't get minus five, that means minus three is not a solution. So I'm going to hit enter. Did I get minus five? No. So I know right away, I don't have to check the second one. I know minus three is not even an option. So now I'm going to go to B. But this time I'm going to use three as X. Three store X. And I'm going to plug it back into that same quadratic equation. What should I see if that's a solution when I, when I press enter? Negative five. Negative five. Oh, I see a negative five. Because that's what an equal sign means. If I plug in a value for X, I should get the same thing on the other side. In this case, I got a negative five. So I plug that three in. So B, C, and D all have three. So it could be B, C, or D. So that means I have to try six next. Six store X. Instead of go right back up to my expression, press enter. Did I get minus five? No. No. So I know it is not B. It's A. It's C. So now let's see. I'm going to do eight. Eight store X. Oh. Back up to my expression. Hit enter. I should get minus five. I do. I know my answer is three comma eight. And that's, again, using your calculator to solve a difficult problem. Now, I wouldn't be a math teacher if I didn't show you how to do it algebraically. I'm sorry? I'm sorry? Okay. So, we've three comma eight. So, let me save it. Let me clear it. Let me maximize the calculator. So, you, well, I won't be able to, you won't be able to see it all because it was a lot. But, there we go. Let me save it. Now, now I want to solve it algebraically. So you know how to do it. I'm going to solve it algebraically. What you should know is that the standard form of, oops, who is writing on my screen? Bridget, are you no, writing not, on my screen? Who's writing on my screen with that yellow marker? Shannon, was that you? <laughs> <laughs> right, so... Now, in, in my classes, sometimes I give students the ability to do problems on the screen. I allow them to write, so I never turn that off. But watch this. What you should know is the standard form of a quadratic equation is AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. Okay? So, is our equation equal to zero? No. Nope. No, it is not. So, how can I get rid of negative five? You got to... Oh, I forgot how to do it. How can I get rid of that negative five? Do some to both sides. Divide, I mean, um, subtract five from both sides. Something like why that. Would I, why, would I why would I subtract five from both sides? Because you're trying to make it as a zero. You're trying to. I, I am trying to make it zero, but what is the opposite of minus five? Plus five. So you remember, you got to remember. You, yeah. In order to move a, a, a term from one side of the equation to the other, you want the opposite operation. Right. So the, so the opposite of minus five is plus five. Right. Whatever I do on one side, I do on the other. Now, I put the plus five under the 19 because those are like terms. I didn't put the five under the minus 11x. I didn't put the five under the x squared. They're not like terms. I put the five under the 19. So now I combine those. I get x squared. Minus 11x plus 24 is equal to zero. So gotcha. now my quadratic equation is in standard form. Yep. And so you plug it in the computer. Now, now, well, you can also plug it in that way, but I'm going to show you how to factor it. I'm going to show you how to do it now. So how would you factor this problem? So oh, first I know of all, how. I know how. 
What's A equal to? Um, Tell me a what. is equal to um, it's um, x plus x plus. What is A equal to? X plus X, right? Nope. Can anybody tell me what A is equal to? X squared? Nope. What, what's the coefficient in front of the X squared? One. One. One, one. one, one plus X? No, no. Listen. Look at the AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. The okay. A is what's seven in front of the X squared. The right. B is what's seven in front of the X. And the C is the constant. So A is the coefficient in front of the X squared. Well, Mr. Tisley, I don't see a number in front of the yeah, X squared. It's a. If yeah, you I don't it. see a. a number in yeah. front of a term, the coefficient is what? One. 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 So the coefficient or B is for X is Negative what? 11. Negative, Negative 11. Negative 11. And C is what? Plus, plus 24. Plus 24. So first of all, you should be able to identify A, B, and C. Right. right? Once you're able to identify A, B, C, this is the second thing I want you to do. If A is equal to 1, I want you to factor C. Right. Got it. Right? So what are the factor pairs of 24? What two numbers can I multiply together to get 24? Um, um, 6 and 4. Six and four. What else? Let's start with one. One times what equal 24? Two. I mean, 24. 24. Two times what equal 24? 12. 12. Three times what equal 24? Four. And there you answer right there because you're, you're subtracting and you get the one right. Ho hold on. Hold on. Don't jump ahead first. Three times what? Give me 24. Four. Oh, I'm Three sorry. Three times I'm what equal 24? Eight. 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 Four times what? Give you 24. Six. Six. Five doesn't go into 24. Six goes into 24, but we already have six as a factor. So that's how we know when to stop. Now, on the other side, you have to reverse your signs. So instead of positive one and positive 24, you're going to have minus one and minus 24. Instead of positive two and positive 12, you're going to have negative two and negative 12. And the same thing for each one. Why? Because two negatives also make a positive. Does everybody understand that? Right. Now, your next step is to find which pair is going to give you B. So B is minus 11. Which pair is going to give you B? Um, um, if two minus, minus, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Which pair is going to give you negative 11? None of them because... Okay. Oh, 3 and 8. 3 and 8 give you 11. I'm looking for negative 11. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I, I don't see any because 4 and 10, I mean, 4, I mean, 6 and 4 is 10. Eight. Well, you get six, six and four is 10, three and eight is 11, two and 12 oh, is 14, one and three, 24 is 25. So what three, you should- Negative right, so, three and negative eight. Negative so what eight. you should be noticing right away, if my B is negative and all my numbers on the left side are positive, I'm not even gonna look at this side. Right. Because you're only gonna get a bigger number. You're not gonna get a negative number with two positive numbers. So you know right away, I'm only looking at the right side. And the, and the pair that's gonna give you negative 11 is negative three and minus eight. Minus right. three minus eight equals negative 11. Right. Now, once you find those pairs, watch this. X minus three, X minus eight. Eight, yeah. This is what they want you to do. But if they give you multiple choice, you just plug them in. That's a whole lot of work. But you should be able to take a quadratic equation and factor it. What you should notice is, and this is why it's important for you to know your multiplication tables and to know your factor pairs and know what a factor is. Right. You must know your factor. You must not multiply because when they, you, you see that 124, you say, oh, four times six, three times eight. But guess what? You don't want to skip anything. Start with one. One times 24. Okay. Two times 12. Three right. times eight. 
four times six. Five doesn't go into 24. Six goes into 24, but I already have six there. I know I need to stop. Right. Go on my other side, change my signs of my numbers on the left. Right. And then find a pair that's going to give you B. So yeah. this is factored. Yeah. The solutions will be, what's the opposite of minus three? Plus three. And what's the opposite of minus eight? Plus eight. So this is the solve the quadratic equation. We factor the quadri quadratic equation. The purpose of factoring it is so we can solve it easily. Everybody understand that? Yeah, but you know what? You also... Just the easy way, but you also can, you got a formula for it too, right? <laughs> Did y'all hear what Bridget said? She said, listen, this is the easy way. That's what I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to show you the easy way. So when you take your test, you can knock it out in less than a minute. Now, if you use your calculator, if you got the ebook, I'll show you how to do this question in like 15 seconds. But right. I'm gonna now, what she said was, how do you do this problem? the more difficult way. So let me save this and clear it. And then we're going to do some, we are, we're going to do a short quiz. You know, I got to, because that quiz has got me hooked now. It got me hooked. Watch this, but watch this. A equal one, B equal negative 11, C equal 24. So if you look on your formula sheet, what you should see is minus B plus or minus B squared minus four AC all over 2a. This is your quadratic formula. All you're doing is plugging in. Once you identify a, b, and c, you just plug it in. So minus b is minus minus 11 because b is negative 11 plus or minus b squared. So minus 11 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1 times C, which is 24, all over two times A, and A is one. So all we did was take the A and plug it in. So all we take, took the A and plug it in. Oops, let me change the color a little bit. We took the A and everywhere A, I plugged in a one. Everywhere I saw B, I plugged in a negative 11. Everywhere I saw C, I plugged in the 24. Again, you should, now, in the ebook, I'll show you how to do this easy. But by hand, I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. Two negatives make a positive. So we got 11 plus or minus. You should know your squares. 11 times 11 is 121. Four t minus 4 times 1 is minus 4. 4 times 24 is 80 plus 16 is 96, so minus 96 all over 2. Mr. Tins, this is a whole lot of work. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This problem is a five to seven minute problem. If you take your time, know how to plug in uh, numbers and store your variables in the calculator, or know how to put the quadratic formula using the calculator. This is one of the lessons in my book. This problem becomes a 30 second problem. Doing it by hand, five to eight minutes. So let me finish. 11 plus the square root of 25 over two. Everybody should know the square root of 25 is what? Five. Five, so 11 plus or minus five over two. This now becomes a two part problem. So this becomes 11 plus five over two and 11 minus five over two. 11 plus five is 16 over two, which is eight. 11 minus five is six over two, which is three. We still got answers of three and eight, but look how much longer this took. Look how much longer this took. So quadratic equations. Now, what I've heard is that now they'll have two or maybe three quadratic equations. They used to only have one. Now they've been putting one or two problems, sometimes three. So you have to know, first of all, how to multiply by numbers, how to factor quickly a quadratic equation when your coefficient is one, and then how 
to identify A, B, and C and plug into your quadratic formula. Or you can just do my ebook for two days, do the lesson for two days, and you'll know how to do it in less than a minute. <laughs> Again, but the, the, today we actually went over at least six questions that you're going to see on your exam. At least six. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven. Man, six or seven problems, maybe even eight, because evaluating algebraic expressions, evaluating functions, um, plugging into uh, 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 or substituting a value in may be very useful. That's probably six to eight problems, easily, easily. So um, let me go to it. Let me see if I can find a little easy one right here. Let me see. No, no, no. We're not going to do completing the square. Definitely not completing the square. No, 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 no. Let me try to find an easy one real quick. Minus three plus one. That's good. Uh, four and two. That's good. I can do five and six. Uh, Fifteen. Uh, Fifteen and one. That's good. And no, we're not going to do 23. So I'm gonna do six, seven, and eight. This is what you should be able to do when you see quadratic equations. First of all, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Right away, what you should see with a is equal one is I'm a factor c. So one times eight, two times four. So right away, you should see that's gonna give you six. So x plus two, x plus four is factored, then we're going to find the zeros. The opposite of plus two is minus two. Opposite of plus four is minus four. That's how fast you should be able to see to be able to factor a quadratic equation when the coefficient is one for your GED. Not in college courses. Sometimes they do a little something differently. So this is what I actually was doing with a young lady the other day, completing the square. But right now, I'm doing ones that are common that you should be able to look at. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, already in standard form. C is minus three, one times minus three or minus one times three. Which pair is gonna give me minus two? So I look at which pair is gonna give me minus two right there, N plus one, N minus three. That's factored to solve this quadratic equation, minus one and three. That's how fast you should be able to do some of these quadratic equations by factoring and solving them, okay? Now, when they make them difficult, they're gonna give you like five n squared plus whatever, whatever. But this is where you use the multiple choice to make sure you know how to multiply binomials. That's how I know it's guaranteed, guaranteed to be on your exam. You must know how to multiply by numerous is this is directly associated with solving quadratic equations okay now it is close to seven i do want to check up in the hospital so i'm going to stop tonight at seven i i i, I can't afford to go over because my mind is working on me right now but again these are things you should be able to do and should, you should be able to practice any more any more questions before we leave this evening Okay, so, so let me, and, and you're right. So what you want to do is like, for example, um, um, let me see, for example, let me go to my quizzes here. This is on, this is, uh, this is on, on the website. So I'm just going to open up the one for quadratic equations. Let me see if I can find it. This is all the ones I've been making. I've been, I've been going to work, like to work. I've been going to work. Let's see if I can find one for quadratic equations. I'm pretty sure I have, there we go right there. So I'm just gonna play it real quick so you see some of the examples to help you practice. Uh, let me do, uh, I just wanna sample it. Where's the sample? Uh, hold on, I gotta be able to sample it. Let me do a sample. Come on, come on, what just happened? Um, all right, uh, I just wanna preview it. Uh, all right, so, all right, so, I, uh, mm. All right, so I'm going to just do it real quick to show you some answers. So you should be able to look at this right here and plus say this. minus 5 plus 5 is 0. So I have no middle term. Minus 5 plus 5 is negative 25. So I know right away my quadratic equation is minus 25. 
You should be able to look at this and know 2x squared plus 6x minus 5x minus 15. So again, you know your end term is minus 15. Now my multiple choice, I have all of them is minus 15. The GD is not going to have that. They're going to have plus 15. So you know you can get rid of two of those answers. But you, again, this is some of the stuff on the quiz you should be able to do. Identify A, B, and C. So I got three of those problems. Factor. Which of these is factor? Factor this quadratic equation. Factor. And then solve. These are the things you have to be have to do for quadratic equations. Solve, 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 solve. Get a little more difficult here. And then at the end, what is the quadratic formula? And then more difficult. This is I've, I've made these questions for the task in the uh, in the high set. These are questions you might see on the high set. So let me just uh, show you this real quick. Here. Minus B. So if you know the formula, minus B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So that means if I look at this, oops, let me scroll this down. If I look at this, if you identify A is 2, B is minus 5, C is negative 3. So you're just looking at which one. So minus or minus 5. So I know it's not A. I know it's not B. So minus or minus five could be C or D. Minus five squared, minus five squared. Boom, I know it's not that one. I know the answer is right there. Just by understanding that I'm plugging each one of those in. And this is a quiz, because you mentioned quizzes. This is something that can prepare you for the different types of questions you, you'll be um, going to see on the exam, okay? <laughs> can, we, can we get to that page? Well, you can't get to uh, directly to this page, but if you go to my website, you'll see on my website, it's a bunch of, let me see if I can open it up real quick. Oh, on your website. Okay. Right. I see what so once you go to the website, because I these are only the ones that I've made available. I've been making a lot of them because a lot of people oh. recently been sending me emails and tell me how effective that they were. They were. So let me go here. Now you seen yeah, the admin. Tinsley, Tinsley, yeah. listen, I have a question. Mm -hmm. You've been so nice to us and you've been like doing all these free classes and helping us. And I mean, giving it your all to make it better for us and to help us pass this test. Um, I want to do a favor for, do you drink coffee or how can I want, I want to just like, thank you. But I you can, like, do let, you like let, coffee let. or? So what we'll do, what we'll do is so let me show you how to get there first. So you come to the bottom, okay. you'll see, you'll see flashcards. So you click on those flashcards, and it'll take you to the several different types. So so remember, I called them flashcards, but you you can also take them as quizzes. I'm about to show you in a minute. So you can use them as quizzes because the one young lady in the email told me she used them as flashcards. So, for example, formulas. This is the one she used. I got one for first five. Mm -hmm. Fraction, decimal, percents. Square, square roots, cube, and cube roots. Geometry. Algebraic expressions. Slope from an equation. Equation mm -hmm. of a line. And quadratic equations. So all of these are right here. So what she did was she went to flashcards. I mean, she went to uh, formulas. And I did make it in quizzes, but you can take the quiz, reattempt the quiz, or you can use this flashcards for a study guide. Wow. So what she did was she used it as a flashcard and said, okay, what is the formula for area of a square? Okay, well, that's length times width or area equal S times S or S squared. Flip it. I was right. Next question. What's the area of a rectangle? Length times width. Let me check it. Good. Next. What is the area of a parallelogram? Base times height. Let me check it. Good. Yeah. Next. What is the area of a triangle? One half base times height. Let me check it. So this is what she did to get all her formulas down. Right. So I got all of them. Trapezoid. Area of a circle. Circumference of a circle. 
perimeter. So all the, most of the uh, uh, um, formulas that you're gonna need to know, I put in here. Oh, okay. Look at that. So you can practice. She used them as flashcards. In this way, she said, this has helped her remember all the formulas. And this is right from my website. Again, um, go to flash, uh, go all the way to the bottom of my website under flashcards and open up a page of about 10 different either quizzes or you can use them as flashcards. But listen, so to answer your question is once yeah. you pass the exam, then you can talk to me about thanking me. I don't want you to thank me until you pass your exam. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. You don't have to be sad. It'd be, you don't have to get a. It'll be fine. We go. I'm gonna help everyone by coming Mondays, by using the ebook, by using Schoology, by using the website. You know, I, I try to put multiple ways because people study and learn different ways. So this is for us all to be able to pass, and you can. Uh, go so you can go to community college. You can go yeah. to a regular college. You can go to yeah. a training program. You can get a promotion in your job. This is what I did it for. Yeah, okay? but people want to appreciate you too. So, <laughs> all right, <yeah>. thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. So when you pass, then you can talk to me. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So all right. everybody have a wonderful night. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna find out what's going on. And uh, I'll remember if any questions. Remember, uh, oh, listen, this week has been amazing. How many people got on school G and been taking quizzes? I love it. I love it. I've been bragging, and I don't even know half of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you should hear me. I'll be like, 28 people logged in, da, da, da. but I love it. I love it. I love it. So just keep, keep, continue to work hard. Any problems you have, take pictures. If you want to send me a text or send me an email, continue to work hard until we pass this exam. Okay. All right. Everybody have a good night. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye.